All right. Well, that surprised uh, some of the Republicans who were working on this deal with their fellow Republican Lamar Alexander of Tennessee and uh, Democrat Patty Murray. Uh, both of whom said they kind of had the president's tacit support on an effort that could keep those insurance payments coming via taxpayers for at least another couple of years until they thought up something more permanent. With the president coming out against it and then Speaker Paul Ryan later on in the day saying that's going nowhere fast, this latest uh, sort of middle ground, well, is gaining no ground. So that was then. This is now. What happens now? Uh, to Kevin Campbell, he's a, a, a doctor, of course, a, a, a renowned doctor at that, a cardiologist. So I, I have deep respect for these guys. Um, so, doctor, very good to have you. Uh, is it your sense then that nothing really has changed here? Because the president is loath to do anything that helps insurance companies. I know you have your own battles with insurance companies, but what do you make of this? You know, I really don't think anything has changed. And even if this piece of legislation were to pass, it just kicks the can down the road two more years. Obamacare is going to fail, and it's already failing. We're seeing this with insurance companies pulling out of the markets. And if we are able to shore this up, it's the same thing's going to happen two years later. So I actually agree with the president saying no more subsidies to the insurance companies. But would it be too dramatic and too fast? One of the things that's been raised, doctor, is that by, by cutting things off right now, would be like ripping one of your patients off an operating table, you know, mid-surgery. What do you say? You know, I think that is a concern. We must care for these people. But, you know, Congress has had eight years plus to come up with a viable replacement no, for right Obamacare, and they have not. And that's what's frustrating to me. You know, and I think what the president has said is, you know, since you can't get anything done, maybe we can try to, to force your hand. And now there's more bickering and really nothing of substance being put forward. You know, Doctor, as a cardiologist, um, at your level, and your, uh, has this affected you? In other words, do, 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 do some of your patients, maybe a lot, come in, and their coverage is through the Affordable Care Act, and as a result, it makes reimbursement all that problematic? What, what, what would you say? No, it's impacted all of us, and certainly us in cardiology are impacted greatly. You know, what frustrates me is my patients come in, and we can prevent major things happening from them, but they can't afford their medicines, or they can't follow up, or they can't get to the doctor's office, or they don't have the copayment. I mean, there's so many things out there that have separated me from my patients, and that's what frustrates me. We need health care reform that doesn't focus on whether you're a Democrat or Republican, but focuses on the patient and make sure that we put patients first. You no, the one thing, since I have dabbled in this a little bit, doctor, not to your degree, but I can tell you this. I liken health insurance companies to, uh, you know, student loan marketers. That, that Getting the student loan enables the universities to keep jacking up prices. Getting the health care coverage you insurer allows hospitals to jack up fees um, and, and a lot of the special service. I'm, I'm not talking your own, sir, but, but that, that it doesn't do anything to contain pricing or or make it more competitively priced. It, it, it just actually supports the beast. What do you think? I think you're exactly right. I think why should a hip operation cost so much more in New York City as compared to small town Iowa? We need standard transparent prices. And, you know, insurance companies and device makers and pharmaceutical industries, they're responsible for these price hikes. Physicians aren't making a lot of money on this stuff. It's mainly the hospitals, the hospital administrators, and then the insurers, and then, you know, all the device manufacturers. Insurance companies have made out like bandits with the Affordable Care Act. But a lot of the drug makers, because they know the insurance guys are covering part of that cost, they keep jacking up the price of what they have. Now, they say because of research and development, I don't deny that is a factor, but one feeds the other sometimes, right? You're exactly right. My point is, why should the United States feed the research and development for all of pharmaceuticals? In Denmark, the country says, we're going to pay you this much for this drug and not a penny more. Why can't we negotiate prices with Medicare? I think we have to put the clamps on big pharma and the device industry. If we don't, prices are going to continue to skyrocket. Doctor, a quick point of advice here. I had heart surgery a little over a year ago. My wife insists that I have to eat healthy every day. Could you please inform her, because I think she's watching, that that's not true. <laughs> You know, a little bit of moderation, maybe a slice of pizza on the show every now and then. That'll be okay. But just hit the gym afterwards. So, so, so you know, I knew you would say that. All right, doctor. <laughs> Thank you very, very much.